over 60 and having bleeding? Is that normal? Today we're going to talk about what is postmenopausal bleeding and what you should do about it. Well, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. DuPont. I'm a board certified gynecologic oncologist and I'm passionate about educating women on how to live healthier and longer lives and I believe all that starts with great health. Well today we're going to talk about postmenopausal bleeding. I was fortunate enough to do a radio segment with Karen Hunter last month just about women's health in general. And I talked about postmenopausal bleeding and I realized that not everyone knows what's normal and what's abnormal. So today I wanna to kind of talk about what's normal so we can talk about what is abnormal. So menstrual cycles usually occur, you know, once a month or every 28 days. Usually bleeding is usually lasts from three days to seven days. And most women will have a you know normal cycle every month. You shouldn't be passing heavy clots. You shouldn't have bleeding in between cycles. And so normal is just a regular monthly cycle lasting three to seven days. And most women, it occurs you know every 28 days to 30 days. Well, when we think about premenopause, what is premenopause? That's just the time before menopause. So most women are in premenopause until they've had their cycle stop for 12 months. Now we know perimenopause is that transition between premenopause and menopause. So perimenopause is usually the transition where your cycles begin to change. And that's one of the first symptoms that you're beginning to lose ovarian function. And one of the first signs is that your cycles may be irregular or start changing. And that's perimenopause. Where postmenopause is when you've had no cycles for 12 months, and that's postmenopausal. So after you've had one whole year with no cycles, we say you've gone through the change or you're postmenopausal. Natural menopause occurs at the age of 51, but hereditary is the biggest factor. So whenever your mom or your sister or your aunt went through menopause is more likely when you're going to go through menopause. So always ask patients, you know, when did your mom go through the change? Because you'll be more like her than other women in the world. And so postmenopausal bleeding is any bleeding after menopause. So after those 12 months, you should not have any bleeding. And that is something I want you to let your doctors know if you are having bleeding. There's another term called premature ovarian insufficiency or premature menopause. And that's when menopause occurs before the age of 40. That does affect 1% of all women. So that's kind of early menopause or premature menopause. When we talk about abnormal bleeding, we're talking about something that's not normal. So characteristics of abnormal bleeding are bleeding um, from the uterus that's more frequent than normal, lasts longer than normal, or is heavier than normal. So cycles that last more than seven days, that's abnormal. And usually you'll be, you know, heavy bleeding just means you're changing your pad every one to two hours. And that's abnormal because that's too much. Bleeding or spotting in between periods is abnormal bleeding. And that's, you know, a warning sign that something's not right. Bleeding or spotting after sexual relations is not normal, so definitely let your healthcare provider know. If your menstrual cycle is longer than 35 days or shorter than 21 days, that's usually abnormal as well. And also not having a cycle for three to six months. Like, you know, a lot of my athletes will train, kind of overtrain, and their cycles will stop. Well, that's abnormal. Sometimes people will be in a very stressful situation as their cycles will stop. That is abnormal. And then, of course, bleeding after menopause is abnormal. So what are some of the causes of postmenopausal bleeding? So this uterus has a lot of pathology, and it shows kind of what are some of the causes. So one of the main causes is for postmenopausal bleeding, we know is, you know, endometrial polyps, endometrial hyperplasia, which is a precancer condition. You can have uterine fibroids that can cause abnormal bleeding. You can have endometrial cancer. And so when we think of postmenopausal bleeding, you know, I was always taught, you know, it's, it's endometrial cancer until proven otherwise. So it doesn't mean that it's always cancer, but it means it's something that we're thinking about because we know that the incidence increases as you go through menopause if you're having bleeding. But there's some other causes of postmenopausal bleeding. So we talked about fibroids and polyps. We talked about hyperplasia. You can also get cervical cancer. So we want to make sure, you know, you've had your pap test. You can get vaginal cancers that may present as bleeding. There's some other things that aren't related to the uterus that can also cause bleeding. And, you know, I've had patients with trauma or vaginal atrophy where their vagina gets very dry. It's called now genital urinary syndrome of menopause. You know, that can make your vagina very dry. And some people, especially if they're having relations, can get tears and that can cause bleeding. You can have bleeding from the bladder, such as hematuria or blood in the urine. You know, it could be just 
caused by bladder infection or kidney stones, but also be caused by something more serious like a bladder cancer. Very rarely will we see cancers of the fallopian tube or ovary present as bleeding. That's not usually how they present, but um, just so that you're aware, you know, that anything can cause bleeding. Some other causes of bleeding that are more that are very common as well as medications. You know, are you on a blood thinner or you know an aspirin? And so those are also very important. Patients with liver disease or cirrhosis also may have bleeding. Some other causes would be um, abscesses where it's a diverticular abscess or pelvic abscess. Sometimes those will cause fistulas and may cause uh, drainage or blood in the vagina. You can also get hemorrhagic cystitis from pelvic radiation therapy. So there are some other causes. There's always trauma. There's foreign objects. You know, I've had patients, you know, leave IUDs in for 20 years or um, lost tampons. So any of that can cause abnormal bleeding as well. And some of the other causes, of course, um, I think I mentioned already are liver cirrhosis or, you know, any problems with your livers or your clotting system. So those are also cause um, abnormal bleeding. I did do a video on abnormal bleeding last year, so please check that out. It does have a lot of the rare causes of bleeding, but talks about some of the, you know, causes that we're looking at using the Palm Cohen system of abnormal bleeding. So please check that out if you want more information. Well, we do know that postmenopausal bleeding will occur in 4 to 11% of all postmenopausal patients, and it counts for 5% of all office visits. And one thing I also forgot to mention in terms of causes of postmenopausal bleeding is sometimes hormone therapy. I'll have patients that maybe start hormone therapy for the first time, or they're changing their dose, and they may have some bleeding due to either the estrogen or the progesterone. So sometimes we have to figure out which one is causing abnormal bleeding and address that as well. So postmenopausal bleeding is not always due to cancer, but it's something that we want to make sure that you see your healthcare provider if you are having postmenopausal bleeding. So when you see your doctor, what do we do? So first we want to get a history. We want to know when did it start? When is it happening? How long has it been happening? And did you change your medications? Are you on any new medicines, especially blood thinners? I'll have patients, you know, maybe they had heart disease or maybe they had a stroke and they're starting on a, a blood thinner. So a lot of times that can be the cause of the bleeding. I've seen patients with some of the, you know, hormonal supplements that they get online or on Amazon that could cause bleeding. So you always want to let your doctor know if you're starting any new medicines, even if it's just herb or supplement, we also, we need to know, you know, what's in those medicines. And then we want to know the nature of bleeding is a cap happening all the time? Is it just when you urinate? So that's very important to kind of write down some of the questions that we're going to ask you when you come to the office, just so you kind of thought through what you want to tell your doctor. And then are there any associated symptoms? Are you having pain every time you bleed? Are you having fevers? Because that tells us you may have an infection somewhere or an abscess. And then have you had any changes in your bladder or your bowel function? And then we also want to know, again, if you had any history of diabetes or stroke. Again, also if you've had a family history of cancer, because we do you know some cancers do tend to run in families and so that's really important. After we get a good history we're going to do an exam. Most likely you'll get a pap test, you'll get a pelvic exam, you may also get an ultrasound. The doctor may order a CAT scan or an MRI depending on your history and the findings on the exam and then also we may do an endometrial biopsy with or without hysteroscopy. I do have two videos on those so please take a look if you want more information on the endometrial biopsy done in the office with or without hysteroscopy. And then you may get referred. So if you see your primary care doctor or your nurse practitioner, you may get referred to a gynecologist or a gynecologic oncologist, depending upon the finding. So definitely see my video on referral to a specialist to kind of give you information on that process. Because I know sometimes it's scary. You know, I'll see patients that come in and they're like, I don't know why I'm here, but my doctor told me to come. And so a lot of times, you know, being aware of what's going to happen will help alleviate some of that fear. But, you know, your doctor may refer you. Doesn't mean that you have cancer, but it may mean that they want you know, a second opinion, or they may want additional testing that your doctor may not be able to do in their office. So definitely, if you're referred, please keep your appointment and, and go to see the specialist. Well, we do have a great society for gynecologic oncology where you can find a provider near you. If you are having postmenopausal bleeding, let's say you weren't referred to a specialist and you can go to our website, sgo.org. There is a physician locator a tab where you can find a specialist near you. Well, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. And thank you for watching to the very, very end. Again, if you have not subscribed, please click that button. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.